the Twin Capes, Cape May and Cape Henlopen on the New Jersey side of the Delaware Bay. There are stunning beaches, wonderful hotels, a great zoo, and history that comes to life every day. On the Cape Henlopen, Delaware side, there is quaint Lewis with its hip restaurants, Rehoboth, and all the beaches that bring so many to stay and play in one of the prettiest places in the country. The Twin Capes connected by the Cape May Lewis Ferry, a wonderful ride where you can take a break from the ordinary. Twin Capes Television starts now. Hi, I'm Mike Porch. I'm marketing manager for the Cape May Lewis Ferry. I'd like to take a few minutes of your time to tell you about a fantastic tourist destination, the Twin Capes of Cape May and Cape Henlopen, joined together by the Delaware Bay and the Cape May Lewis Ferry. There's something for everyone at the Twin Capes. Great beaches, boardwalks, amusements, recreation, fine dining. You got cool lighthouses. You have Victorian Cape May, historic Lewis, and great eco-tourism opportunities. Remember, there are two sides to every adventure. You're missing half the fun if you don't visit the other side. Have a great time, great trip, thanks a lot. Hi everyone and welcome to Twin Capes Television. I'm your host Rich Noonan aboard the Twin Capes one of the incredible Cape May Lewis ferries. And I'll tell you, since I've been a kid, this has been one of my favorite days, riding on the ferry on a beautiful day, knowing the beach and all the destinations that are a lot of fun are on the other side. For the next half hour, we're going to show you some of the great locations on either side, the Twin Capes, Cape May and Cape Henlopen. And we begin with something that scares a lot of fathers like me. If I would go to my daughters and say, girls, we're going to have a day of history, they would run out the back door of the house. So I wouldn't tell them about where we are going, but they would have a great time once they got there because we're about to show you some incredible historical sites that are really a lot of fun for the family. Historic Cold Spring Village is one of those very rare places in which visitors have a very good time while learning much more than they ever dreamed of. We took a carriage ride around the village, which is right off Route 9 in Cape May, a few minutes from the ferry. Its 30 acres along a shaded lane are so much more than a fascinating trip back in time. There's a special feeling here. A valuable tribute to how people lived from the late 1700s to the mid 1800s for sure, but the village is also a very cool modern day experience that people of all ages have loved for almost three decades. Historic Cold Spring Village is a living history museum, which means visitors can actually touch the past and hear how life really was back then when life was so much different. Well, Historic Cold Spring Village is quite a place. We have 30 acres of property, including the outbuildings. We have 26 restored historic buildings that go back as far as 1691. Uh, as a matter of fact, our 1691 building is the oldest surviving building in Cape May County. And what people will learn when they come and visit us is what their lives would have been like had they lived two centuries ago in the early American era, after the American Revolution and prior to the Civil War. Uh, all of us are related to people who lived in that era. So when you come and visit us, what you're seeing is the way that your very own ancestors lived. The educational value notwithstanding, this is a really fun way to spend some time in Cape May. There are over two dozen buildings here. They are restored impeccably, and the interpreters are eager to inform and entertain. It's a fascinating way to hear the way it was. Listen to this. There was such a large whaling industry here that you didn't need to leave the beach to do your whaling. You could spot and harpoon your whales right from the shore because they would swim right up to the beach. Wow. All you needed was a little rowboat. The one-room schoolhouse at Historic Cold Spring Village is one school the kids actually like attending. A school day for a scholar started about 4 in the morning because he or she had to get up to do his or her chores before they came to school and they had to be at school by 8 o'clock. Um, now the first thing they did was make their manners when they got here, which uh, for a lady would be to curtsy and say good morning school mistress or school master, and for a gentleman would be to bow um, and say the same thing. We are very family friendly and we do pride ourselves on that. Um, one of the things that we encourage is we have uh, take home children's crafts that they can make daily at our craft table. 
Uh, another thing is right now we're on our horse and wagon ride with uh, the village horse Levi. Um, that's offered free every weekday to everyone who visits, uh, which is a very nice and popular thing. He's a great horse. Historic Cold Spring Village has special events every weekend during the summer and well into September. There's always something different here, whether it be a Civil War battle reenactment or a quilt show like the day we were there. There's a great food selection here as well, from the bakery to the ice cream parlor to the Old Grange restaurant, which is fantastic. Historic Cold Spring Village is one of those treasures of this region. It's a nonprofit that not only deserves but earns our support. There is such value in knowing our history, especially when learning it is so much fun. Every child should come to Historic Cold Spring Village. This is their heritage. And it's important that all of us, adults, children, know the heritage of our nation and how our nation came to be the way that it is in the 21st century. Uh, there's quite a story behind it, and it's vital that we know all the sacrifices that our ancestors made. This is one of the images I will remember from my visit here. Jerry is a 79-year-old blacksmith at Cold Spring Village who makes things every day to use at the village or sell in the general store. As I watched him walk down a village shady lane on legs that have their own history, I smiled and thought, wow, that is something I might never see again. There are many images at historic Cold Spring Village just like that, and I urge you to take your family, take your time, and honor your past at this very special place. You hear those words pretty cool a lot at one of the finest aviation museums anywhere. Just a few minutes drive from historic Cold Spring Village and the ferry is the Naval Air Station Wildwood Aviation Museum. It's easy to find right at the Cape May County Airport. This is hallowed ground. Hangar number one is the place where many brave American airmen came to learn how to drop bombs during World War II. Rich, what we have here is a hangar, uh, 92,000 square foot all wood, uh, double wide hangar built by the Navy in 1942. It was built as a direct result of the Japanese bombing uh, on Pearl Harbor and also the threat of German U-boats along the eastern coast of the United States. That's why facilities like this were built. It really is amazing what happened in this cavernous monument to a critical time in American history. Young men came here knowing that many of them would never make it home. In fact, 42 of them were killed in training here. Back then, if a pilot wanted to put a bomb on a target, he pointed his plane directly at that target at a 70 degree angle, point it down directly at the ground, and had to pull up before he hit the ground. Uh, so it was extremely dangerous. The technology was not that good. Uh, the planes basically were falling apart. Uh, we were behind the eight ball as far as the military at the time. Today, NAS Wildwood is an incredible attraction that draws aviation buffs and families looking for right. a great day. We have over 26 aircraft. Um, we have a, a Coast Guard exhibit that just opened. We have a real air traffic control tower that, that was from Bader Field in Atlantic City. Uh, so the museum today operates, we operate year round uh, in season. We're open every day, nine to five. And there's something that appeals to everyone here from kindergarten, preschoolers, to World War II vets, uh, men and women. There's something for everyone here. This is the essence of Naval Air Station Wildwood success. It's a please touch museum. Kids love it. Where else can a child jump into the cockpit of a Cobra attack helicopter or a fighter jet? Think about it. This place is awesome. Everywhere you look here is a fascinating piece of American history. The day we visited, there was an F-14 in the parking lot. Are you kidding me? I asked Bruce where they get all this stuff. Some of the aircraft here are owned by the museum. Uh, some are on loan by the, by, from the Navy uh, or the Marines or the Army. We have um, Vietnam here. We have two Huey helicopters which again, people can actually get into. This particular Blue Angels jet is an A4 Skyhawk. This would have been used during the Vietnam era. As a matter of fact, this uh, type of aircraft was the same type flown by John McCain when he was shot down in Vietnam. There are so many gems here. They even have the fully restored control tower from the old Bader Field at the Atlantic City Airport. You can climb up for a bird's eye view. This is a real simulator in which commercial pilots actually learn to fly. Okay, this is the 727 Coast Guard flight simulator that was used by pilots. Uh, it was totally restored and now guests can come in here and see what the cockpit of a 727 actually looks like up, uh, up close and personal. 
A lot of buttons. Naval Air Station Wildwood Aviation Museum clearly has something for everyone. From modern day fighter jets to the 40s room in which you can see how life really was back then. But our final stop here refocused us on what the Aviation Museum is really all about. In the ready room you could almost hear the young naval airmen being briefed on their next practice mission. Men who were living in the most exciting and most frightening times of their lives. Many of whom died here. The Naval Air Station Wildwood Aviation Museum, hangar number one, listed on the National Register of Historic Places, an important part of American history, and loads of fun to see. The couple who operates this museum likes to say this, when it rains at the beach, everything else is history. Come visit history. You and the kids will love it. NAS Wildwood at the Cape May Airport, open year-round. Well, as we stay on the Cape May side, let's stick with history for a moment. We are going to visit a place that I have admired from afar for about 40 years, Congress Hall. Many U.S. presidents have stayed there. It is the name, a wonderful place to stay. And it's got a lot of history connected to it, of course, but it also has all the modern day conveniences of a simply incredible resort. Let's take a close look at Congress Hall. If you really want to experience Cape May, book a stay at this beautiful place. Congress Hall has overlooked this stunning stretch of sand since well before any of us were born. Congress Hall is listed on the National Registry of Historic Places. It opened in 1816. Think about that, 1816. Back in the day, four U.S. presidents stayed here. In the late 90s, Congress Hall was closed for five years, while its current owners, Cape Resorts Group, pumped millions into the old place and reopened it in 2002. Congress Hall is now better than ever, a stunning luxury resort where people with very good taste come back year after year. We have a very, uh, very interesting clientele that continues to come back year and year again because of the service and the service that we provide. That service has been the signature of Congress Hall's owner, Cape Resorts Group, which has changed the face of Cape May. After Congress Hall, the company bought up and renovated several properties nearby and made them beautiful. Cape Resorts Group turned the old Coachman's Motor Inn into the very hip Beach Shack Hotel with its rusty nail restaurant and bar. This is about the hottest place on the beach. The company also owns the 62-acre Beach Plum Farm, where every kind of herb and vegetable you can think of is grown and taken to the tables of Cape Resorts Group's restaurants. Cape Resorts Group even took this old Model T dealership and turned it into Cape May's most unique shopping destination called the West End Garage. People love it. Cape Resorts Group's owners started with the Virginia Hotel more than two decades ago. It is a very elegant 24-room luxury property. There's an overwhelming theme with all these Cape Resorts properties. It's top quality. Whether it be the front porch of the Virginia for evening cocktails or the courtyard of Congress Hall for a wonderful wedding, these places are special and special memories are made here every single day. It all begins at the beach where service rivals anywhere in the world. Guests get chairs, towels, umbrellas, even cabanas if they want. They can order drinks and food and never leave this beautiful beach. Congress Hall, the Virginia Hotel, and the Beach Shack all have beach service. One of the greatest features that we have of our hotels are the pool and beach services. Um, it's a great opportunity to provide our guests with those memorable, lasting experiences that they can take on and carry on for years after years. The Cape Resorts Group umbrella is meaningful for guests who can use amenities at multiple properties with the stroke of a pen. The signing privileges would be Beach Shack, Congress Hall, and the Virginia Hotel. If you're staying at one of our cottages, you're able to sign there as well, as well as the Sandpiper and the Star Inn. So pretty much all of our, if you're staying with us and we have a credit card on file for you, you have signing privileges. There is wonderful dining at every Cape Resorts hotel as well. The Blue Pig Tavern at Congress Hall has great indoor and outdoor dining. What a spot to spend a summer evening. The Rusty Nail at the 66-room Beach Shack has a beach party every night. I would describe the Rusty Nail as really an uh, island-style, almost all-inclusive resort. Um, very unique for Cape May. Uh, you know, you sort of have the sense that you're on an island here. Uh, Worry-free, very fun, very casual. You know, our whole vibe here is, you know, come right off the beach as you are and enjoy some great food and some coldest beer in Cape May. At the Virginia is one of the finest restaurants anywhere, the Ebbett Room, where the farm-to-table philosophy shines. We have a 62-acre farm, 
which is a uh, you know, wonderful piece of property. We get produce delivered uh, three times a week. Wherever it's in season, we mix it with like the fresh catch of the day. We work with some like local dogs. Um, you know, we get local uh, scallops, local flounder, fluke, oysters, as much as we can, local. After a wonderful meal at the Ebbett Room, there's always a great vibe at the Boiler Room at Congress Hall. If you want a party, it's right here. From party to pamper, the quieter times at these properties are what I love. Sea Spa at Congress Hall is the place to go for a top-notch spa experience. Early morning at Congress Hall, I recommend you hit the wonderful coffee shop, then take a sunrise stroll or choose from a huge selection of bikes to take a ride. If shopping is your thing, you must stroll a couple of blocks to the West End Garage. What a Cape May gem. The West End Garage features over 60 local artisans and boutiques offering art, antiques, jewelry, clothing, and so much more. I have people doing their Christmas shopping in here all of the time, their holiday shopping. They're in here buying gifts in July, they're buying gifts in May for the rest of the year because they come here, they see it, they know they're not going to find it somewhere else, and so they pick it up while they're here. So much to see and do, but what strikes me most about these special Cape Resorts Group properties is that they set the gold standard for what a Cape May vacation should be all about spending time with the people you love at places that you will remember for a lifetime. I pronounce you husband and wife. Eric, you may kiss you goodbye. <laughs> Congress Hall, the Virginia, the Beach Shack, the Rusty Nail, the beach, the sunrise, the memories, the way a Cape May vacation should be. Now on Twin Capes Television, one of the finest par 3 golf courses in America is located right in Cape May Courthouse, minutes from the ferry. This is Laguna Oaks. It's the creation of an architect who spent his life traveling the world helping to create wonderful buildings. But he always had a dream and spent many years working to attain it. Uh, I started buying the ground in 1982 and uh, it took nine parcels to accumulate it all. And uh, I didn't really start to construct this uh, course until about 2002. It did take about five years. It was worth the wait. Just look at this golf course. It's loads of fun to play no matter what your skill level. There's an awesome island hole which might be the top in the country for a par 3 course. And everywhere you look here there are signs that this course was built by a man who really cared about doing the job the right way. I like to think of it as an assembly of ten really fine premium golf holes. Not Many par threes don't go to the trouble we did here with our island green, our bridges, our waterfalls and so forth. So uh, it's a very special par three and I made the claim or the statement when we started, I wanted to make it the finest par three on the east coast. And I think I did. No question about it, Fred is a huge part of the Laguna Oaks story. He was 83 the day we met him, but still puts in very long days to make sure this place runs like clockwork. Players love the fact that they don't have to blow an entire day to play Laguna Oaks. There's a niche here in the golfing world where on a normal course, 18-hole course, especially in the summertime, it takes five or six hours. You can play our course when it's not busy at about an hour and 45 minutes, two hours. When it's really busy, two hours and 15 minutes. Fred is far from done. He has plans to expand. We do want to add eight more holes and a small range, uh, a pro shop, a clubhouse. I love this guy, and you will too. He's an inspiration, and you get the feeling his life's work will never be finished. He's not the retiring type. Oh, no, I enjoy what I'm doing very much. And uh, there, there's plenty of things to still do. I wanna, I, we've already designed eight more holes. I'm anxious to build those, but we have real estate that I want to sell. I have one and two acre sites. We've got to stay busy. I mean, it's, it's been said before, I'll say it again, and I think uh, busy physically and mentally, and probably more mentally than physically. And the challenge is all the time if you look for them, and I've got plenty around here. <laughs> nice job, Fred, a true inspiration. Come out and say hi to Fred and all the other guys here at Laguna Oaks. They're a great bunch. Laguna Oaks right here off the Parkway in Cape May Courthouse, probably the best par 3 course in the country, built by a guy who knows how to do things the right way.
Now on Twin Capes Television, Harpoon Henry's is known for its incredible sunset views. But this is one of those places that simply relaxes you, whether the sun is shining or not. It's literally two minutes off the Cape May Lewis Ferry, a great place to start or end your ferry trip. Well, coming here is like entering paradise. Its cozy deck and outside cabana bar is a great backdrop for outdoor dining and making wonderful memories with friends. This bar at Henry's is always alive with great live entertainment every night of the week and happy hours that people simply love. The locals know a good value, they come to Henry's. The tourists want to see the sunset and enjoy a wonderful meal. Harpoon Henry's is a comfortable, friendly place where they like to say proper attire not allowed. This restaurant can handle a large gathering. The day we were there, these people were celebrating a birthday party in a private room. Henry's has very good seafood, salads, great kids menu. Harpoon Henry's make your first legal left off the ferry and right onto Beach Drive, you'll arrive in paradise. Come on Sunday for the incredible specials and live music to end the weekend with a blast. Harpoon Henry's, don't let the sun set on your next trip to Cape May without a stop at Henry's. Beach Drive in Browning, North Cape May, right on the bay. Harpoon Henry's, paradise found. Rich, I started riding a ferry when I was about seven years old. My grandfather was a fisherman. He lived in Cape May, and he introduced me to the Cape May Lewis Ferry. The first time I came aboard, I fell in love with the Delaware Bay and the Cape May Lewis Ferry. So many things to do on the Cape May side. Let's go to Cape Henlopen, just like that ferry behind me. And when you want to stay on the beach in Rehoboth, there's one name, the Boardwalk Plaza. Now on Rehoboth Dewey Chamber Television, our Home Away From Home segment, and what a home the Boardwalk Plaza is. This stunning Victorian-style landmark is a triple-A four-diamond destination, but it started with humble beginnings. It all started, Jeff's grand, my husband Jeff, his grandparents owned and operated a small little mom-and-pop hotel right here at this location um, called the Sherland, and it was just an 18-unit motel. Back in 1991, that little mom-and-pop motel was replaced with the 84-room Boardwalk Plaza and its incredible Victorian theme. We went with the Victorian theme because Rehoboth has Victorian roots. Um, it was initially, back in the Victorian times, it was a Methodist gathering area. We really set about doing something different here. It's not your typical beach resort. It's you know, got the Victorian flair. Um, we're the only Four Diamond award-winning hotel that's on the ocean in Delaware. Um, so we're really proud of our service and the pampering that we provide here. One of the many things that puts the Boardwalk Plaza in a different league from most other hotels is the fine dining here. Our menu here, I guess it would say American Continental, which pretty much covers, you know, all the bases from French, Mediterranean, uh, the Pacific Rim. Uh, what we do is we take good fresh ingredients and cook it with love. You have to dine at Victoria's, whether it be breakfast, lunch, or dinner. It is wonderful. Guests can dine inside with incredible views or outside right on the boardwalk. The rooms at the boardwalk plaza are stunning, many with real antique furniture and a real nice view. The boardwalk plaza has such a different feel. It's old world elegance with all the amenities that you'd expect in an ultra modern hotel. You want to have a rooftop party? Look at this view. A great corporate meeting, a fantastic spa day, a wonderful getaway with the family, or romantic weekend. It's all here. What we like to kind of emphasize is the value that you get here. You know, if you're going to spend your vacation dollar, when you, when you arrive here, someone's going to open the door for you, carry your bags to the room, you know, bring you room service for your breakfast, turn your bed down at night, and there's nothing like being able to step you know, right out the door. You're not wasting time finding a parking place. You're not wasting time you know, driving down Route 1. So it's a nice place. To, you know, once you're here, you're home. It's home base. You can have all your meals here or take them in your room, you know, step right out onto the beach. Jennifer married her high school sweetheart and right into the hotel life. But she and her husband love their team and this grand place. They plan to grow old here. It's a good place to be, and we don't want to be anywhere else. I don't blame you, Jennifer. The Boardwalk Plaza Hotel, a wonderful family-owned property with a ton of charm, history, and the tender, loving care from owners who are here every single day. Book a stay and make some memories of your own at the Boardwalk Plaza.
Tapes Television. When you get off the ferry in Lewis, I hope you're hungry because a stop at JD's filling station less than five minutes away is a must. Just looking at this place right on Savannah Road in Lewis from the outside makes your mouth water. Its hip, cool, and inviting exterior is only a little preview for what's to come. These two guys came over on the ferry and headed right to JD's for what might be the best burger they will ever eat. They're thick, they're juicy, they're hot. Can't go wrong. James says he was driving over from the ferry and he was dreaming of that JD's burger, remembering. I was stopped in one time before and remembered it. It was definitely memorable. JD's filling station is one of those places that people remember. There are many regulars here and lots of families make JD's an annual stop on vacation. Joe and Daryl, the owners, are well-known restaurateurs in this region. They also own the wildly popular Dos Locos in Rehoboth Beach. They know that good people are the key to having a hit restaurant, and that's why they put Linda Wallace in charge of JD's. Though she came from Northern Ireland 24 years ago, she loves JD's American menu. Our cuisine is good, home-style, American classic food. We do meatloaf, turkey, we do fish and chips, um, turkey rubens, uh, club sandwiches, best burgers, just good home-style cooking that people like, can depend on get a good meal and leave full. Look at this wonderful fresh fish dish with those beautiful scallops on top, prepared perfectly. How about JD's awesome stuffed meatloaf? You won't find this anywhere else. And the hand-formed grilled Angus burgers that people come from miles away to enjoy. There's really a nice bar and great signature drinks at JD's as well. This place has heart feeling and honors its past when this was a flying a gas station back in the day. Another relic from the past is top service and commitment to quality. We try to do the best every day with everything, um, whether it be the food that we buy and how we cook it, to how we present it, to how we talk to the customer and how we deal with them. From they come in the door until they leave, we want them to feel happy and satisfied. Remember the simple JD's message. Come hungry and have a good time. We will, Linda, we will. JD's Filling Station, Lewis. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, 329 Savannah Road, minutes from the ferry in Lewis. You will love it. Now on Twin Capes Television, it's pretty rare to hear the cry of a fledgling bald eagle on a golf course. But it was a daily occurrence this summer at Bayside Resort Golf Club in Selbyville, Delaware. We watched as the mother bald eagle coaxed her young, which were almost as big as her, to take their first flights. We saw a pair of spotted fawns staring us down and a grandpa crabbing with his best buddy. These are just some of the sights this stunning golf club. Oh, they have tremendous golf holes at Bayside as well, as do all the Carl M. Freeman golf clubs. Golfers in the region know about the Freeman clubs. They are all top notch. Bayside borders quaint Fenwick Island, Delaware, and it's one of those clubs where you can play all day surrounded by natural beauty. Golfers just love Bayside. Bear Trap Dunes in Ocean View, Delaware is just two miles west of Bethany Beach, a great little resort town. And Bear Trap has a really special feeling because of so much natural beach grass and vegetation surrounding the stunning holes. You really feel like you're at a beach club here because you are. And then there's the Bay Club in Berlin, Maryland, just outside Ocean City, Maryland, has many devoted players who love it because it's got two stunning golf courses which appeal to all types of golfers. The Freeman Clubs are all now managed by Troon, the biggest name in top quality golf club management. Troon handles premier clubs all over the world. Troon is a perfect match for the Freeman Clubs because they share very similar cultures. Troon, just like Freeman, is known for uncompromised attention to detail. With Troon, golfers in 25 countries get an extraordinary golf experience. The addition of Troon at all the Freeman courses is really meaningful to golfers here. It enhances the entire experience, whether you're playing golf or eating at one of the restaurants. Let's take a quick tour with the woman who manages all of the courses, beginning at the Bayside Resort Golf Club, right off Route 54 near Fenwick Island. The golf club here is a, a Nicholas Signature Golf Course. It's an extremely beautiful, um, challenging, um, spectacular golf course. Along with the incredible golf, Bayside is a wonderful community with all kinds of amenities, including the Cove Restaurant right off the 18th Green. 
A short drive to Ocean View, Delaware is another awesome Freeman property called Bear Trap Dunes. It's about five minutes west of Bethany Beach, and it's a cool golf course. Bear Trap Dunes, which is a real tribute to the natural beauty of the Eastern Shore, is one of the most unique courses in this part of the country. Bear Trap's a 27-hole semi-private golf course. Um, three nines are a little bit different, each one of them. Um, you can play the combination of Grizzly, Kodiak, Black Bear, and whatever combination you're playing, it's a different experience. Uh, very friendly golf course, very, very nice to get around on. After your bird at 18, have a great meal at the Bistro at Bear Trap Dunes. It's a wonderful full service restaurant. Just look past Bogey J, the resident bear for the Bistro. You'll be glad you did. The Bay Club in Berlin, Maryland has 36 holes of championship golf. The East and West courses, like all the Freeman courses, have incredible signature holes, such as the first island hole ever in this region. I think if you have a good product, which I think we have, um, it's an affordable, great value. Um, and then, like I said, you know, just um, on top of it, just you know, providing great customer service, and I think you get people that will come back you know, time after time. Freeman Golf, now managed by Troon. Three wonderful properties, Bayside, Bear Trap Dunes, and the Bay Club. Hey, we can all use more birdies in our game, and who knows? You might even see an eagle. There are many reasons why on a busy summer night, Nicola Pizza will sell a couple of thousand pizza pies and 2,000 Nicobolis. You do the math. The Cajano family members have become wealthy from their delicious creations, but you'd never know it. They have and still earn every single dime. Literally out of the 363 days a year that we're open from 11 a.m. until three in the morning, one of the family members is here throughout that whole day. I think people appreciate that. My basic biggest problem is being bored. I hate being bored. I just, you know, I, I love the summertime because we're busy. I can't stay in the wintertime because it's slow. And basically that's why I put up another restaurant. I just plain got bored and hope that it's going to be busy year round. Nick Sr. and his wife Joan started Nicola Pizza decades ago after they had a daughter with spina bifida and big medical bills. Nick was a school teacher at the time. He made great pizza and the neighbors said, you should sell them. That's literally how the business started. I mean, you're talking about starting from scratch, starting from the back door of a house. Now people line up every summer night outside Nicola to 8 North 1st Street. I must admit my family and I have stood in that line many, many times. The new Nicola's on Rehoboth Avenue is fantastic. It's got a great view from everywhere in the place. Everywhere you look upstairs in the Upper Deck Sports Bar, there are big TVs. You won't miss a game while at the beach. Nicola has literally thousands of loyal customers from around the world. This Baltimore City police captain brought a couple of his nephews down. They arrived before the doors opened. They wanted to be the first in the day we were shooting. My wife and I discovered about uh, 20 years ago, and uh, we, we come here about four or five times a year and always make this our first stop, which I continue to get heck over. But uh, the pizza's great, uh, probably the best pizza I've ever had in my life. Nicola's Nicobolis are what really made Nicola's famous. Everyone is made from scratch. People order them by the case, order them online for shipment anywhere in the world. You've not lived until you've had a Nicola Nicoboli. Order one off the menu or ask to create your own. Nicola's Nicoboli is trademarked, one of a kind, patented, and don't claim that you invented it. You might get popped in the nose. There's been a lot of impersonations, you know, but I basically, I invented it. Nick Sr.'s in his 70s now. He's been offered lots of money to franchise or sell. He won't. And all these happy Nicola customers keep him happy. As for retirement? No, I'm not gonna retire. I love it. It's in my blood. <laughs> I just love it. I, I, I just like everything about it. Thankfully, Nick Jr. loves it too. Nicola Pizza, let's hope 40 years from now, we can still savor that Nicoboli or order that fantastic pie. And thanks to the Cajano family for giving so many of us wonderful traditions at the beach. Those much anticipated stops at Nicola's.
what could be better than this? I mean, the, the Delaware Bay is just a fantastic region. There's so much to offer on both sides of the bay. Thank you, Mike. Lots of passion for the ferry, and it really shows, and why not? I mean, this is what people do on the ferry. They sit, relax, enjoy a cold drink, a meal, read the newspaper, sleep if they want. Imagine what you'd be doing if you weren't on the ferry. You'd be driving, you know, three and a half hours in traffic. The kids would be fighting in the back seat, and you would wish you were out here on the water looking at the dolphins like I am. Well, now let's head over to the Cape May side, and I want to tell you there are many, many destinations for kids over there, but one of them is Maury's Piers. And once a child goes to Maury's Piers one time, you better take him every year. Let's take a trip back in time to Maury's Piers. When I was a kid, the highlight of our week at the Jersey Shore was always a trip to Maury's Pier on the Wildwood Boardwalk, but this is not the Maury's Pier that I remember. Today, it's Maury's Piers and beachfront water parks. There is so much at the modern day Maury's, it's hard to describe. We're not a theme park, we don't want to be a theme park. We want to be the world's greatest seaside amusement park. That is clearly our goal. Maury's is actually three piers that jut toward the sea from the Wildwood Boardwalk. There are more rides here than Disneyland. Over three million people a year come to Maury's, many just to people watch, but over half spend money here. This is a huge operation with 1,500 employees in the summer. At the helm are two brothers. Will Maury is the business and operations guy, and Jack, Will's younger brother, is the creative type, who's always looking for the next big wild ride. My brother is a fantastic um, uh, sort of imagineer, to use the Disney term. He's a great visionary, he's got a great sense of space, and he's really the guy that's responsible for, you know, the programming of the pier. What would be the next great attraction? Um, you know, how should the space lay out? What are we trying to accomplish in atmosphere? And he does a fantastic job of that. Yeah, I get to think of 10 things and Will gets to keep me from building nine of them. <laughs> you can't tell that there are any limitations at Maury's by looking at this place. The day we visited, it was about 95 degrees and humid. The water parks, raging waters and ocean oasis were packed with families having a ball overlooking the Atlantic. The attractions are first class. You want to rent a private cabana, have a massage and gourmet meal over the beach? No problem. Would you prefer to wash down some curly fries with a wonderful frozen drink and a splash of Patron? Feel free. How about a two pound lobster while the kids are having a pizza? Not a big deal. Are you getting the picture? This ain't your grandpa's Maury's. The food is a great example of why Maury's is regarded among the world's best. Who would have thought that Maury's would have a classically trained executive chef to oversee its several dining spots? We want to make experience at Maury's Piers that much better. And we want to hit, you know, we want to hit everybody. Whether you want a funnel cake, or whether you want a nice gourmet breakfast on the wheel, or you want a nice wrap in our water park, or some fresh seafood at one of our restaurants. The chef's team will even serve you a gourmet breakfast on the Ferris wheel with a tablecloth and fine china at 156 feet in the air. Gotta love it. Get me out of here, Get me out of here! Oh, the, the pulse of Maury's is this, whether it be the tantalizing terror of the new incredible ghost ship, or the new It ride that begs the question, can you handle it? The rides are second to none here, no matter what your age and your thrill level. And after spending a day here, my first time back in 25 years, I could not help but wonder what Will Morey Sr. would think of the place that bears his family name. He was a great father and smart businessman who started this with just a big slide he and his brother erected on the boards back in 1969. Will's sons have taken the little family business to new heights, but every day when they walk beneath this arch, they are reminded that they are the keepers, trustees, if you will, of a very special place. Both Will and Jack choked back tears when they talked about their staff and their dad. You know, I know my dad had very big shoes, and um, and I don't, I'm not sure I'm ever going to fill them. Um, so, uh, uh, and I don't necessarily have to try, um, but there's a certain responsibility and integrity to the name whether it be to our family name or whether it be to not let the community down. I think what, what I really enjoy is um, it, uh, being a part of an exceptional team. And it, it's almost an emotional experience, quite frankly. When you see um, you know, people in maintenance and in operations and uh, you know, my brother and, and just all the things that it takes to make a facility like this work, to bring about an exceptional level of family fun that's what really 
that's what makes me tick. It's really nice to know that in this day when successful family businesses such as Maury's are often gobbled up by big companies, the Maury's and their dedicated team aren't going anywhere. Here, success is not always measured on a balance sheet. It is reflected in the faces of the little ones. Do you know when a kid comes off the ride and his face is really precious and his mom and dad's face is reacting to his face, you know, then you know. There really are beautiful images. And it's almost like what you have to do is you have to not look at the big thing. You have to like zoom on down. Maury's Piers and Beachfront Water Parks, a family business where success will always be measured in smiles. Order up. Now on Twin Capes Television, there are very few iconic names in any business, but when you think of cheesesteaks in Philadelphia, Tony Luke's is one of those names. Well, now Tony Luke's is at the Jersey Shore. The day after Thanksgiving 2010 was like Christmas in Wildwood Crest because Tony Luke's opened its doors. There used to be a bait and tackle store on the corner of Sweetbriar and New Jersey Avenue, but now there's an instant icon. Tony Luke's is here, and this place is the real deal, all in the family. Tony Luke is uh, basically my uncle. What does basically mean? Well, Mike Vicario has been calling Tony Luke Uncle Tony since Mike was a kid. Tony and Mike's father are tight, and Tony trusts Mike enough to let him have the first Tony Luke's at the shore. When you look back at the squeaky clean, brand new stainless kitchen here, you see lots of kids, just like any shore business. But these aren't just any kids. They are all in the family. I have my sons back there. Uh, our, one of our managers, his son's back there, my niece is back there. We were here on a summer Sunday and Mike was cutting bread still hot from the oven. It's handmade and the rolls are never the same size. They have to be cut to make them fit perfectly to the sandwiches. Everything is done here just like it is at the South Philly Tony Luke's. These guys were all trained in South Philly. When you order a sandwich here though, does it really taste the same as Philly? Identical. Everything's the same. We bake our own bread as we need it. Uh, the steak is all sliced ribeye. Uh, we cook it slow. Our porks are all cooked at our commissary in the city. And the spinach, broccoli rab, all the vegetables are done there. And everything is uh, vacuum sealed in bags and shipped right to us fresh. The word is out. This Tony Luke's is doing great, serving up lots of sandwiches. I like sharp provolone on mine, but they still go through a ton of cheese whiz here. Do you ever worry about causing heart problems? <laughs> nah, not if it's moderate like anything else. You know, once a week, it's safe. <laughs> Twice a week's good. It sure is. I have loved Tony Luke's for decades, and I'm not alone. Tony Luke's is franchising and going global. We're franchising off. There's one opening up in Sicklerville, New Jersey. Um, we're over in Dubai, so Tony we're spread. Yeah, there's a bunch of them going up. How did they get to Dubai? Um, there was connections over in Dubai, and uh, they wanted they wanted Tony Luke's there. <laughs> we just can't serve pork there. Well, they can here. I asked Mike, what's his favorite Tony Luke's sandwich? My favorite is the pork Italian. Pork Italian with broccoli rabe and sharp cheese. Mike, his sons, his nieces, his nephews all work very hard at this shiny new place on a hot corner in Wildwood Crest, but they aren't complaining. I love the whole experience of seeing somebody's face or the reaction after eating one of our sandwiches. I, I enjoy people being happy. They sure do. Tony Luke's, the corner of Sweetbriar and New Jersey Avenue, Wildwood Crest. You gotta love it. Now on Twin Capes Television, another Jersey Shore landmark, the wharf just over the bridge on the water in Wildwood. In fact, literally on the water. About half the seats at the wharf are over the water on its incredible deck. This is a super place to enjoy wonderful entertainment, great food, and those unbelievable views. Look at what we saw the evening we were there. It was the Christmas in July boat parade. Lots to see on the boats, lots of fun for the kids, and the quintessential Jersey Shore feeling. For many families, coming to the shore would not be complete without at least a few stops at the wharf. The raw bar, the great seafood, wonderful kids menu, reasonably priced drinks, 
make the wharf a favorite for families early in the evening, and when the kids go home, this place really jumps later on. On this night, the Irish band played for a few hours early, and then another band took the stage for the later crowd. The wharf ownership has been at this for a long time. They know what people want at the shore, and they give it to them. The deck is heated, there are flat screen TVs everywhere, great happy hours, and plenty of room to pull up the boat. The Wharf, 708 West Burke Avenue, Wildwood. It's what the Jersey Shore is all about. Well, I hope after watching Twin Capes Television, you'd like to move to this region because it's a wonderful place on both sides. There's no question about it. One of the most special places we've seen is called the Peninsula. I travel all over the country doing television shows. I've never seen a resort living community like the Peninsula. I mean, they've got a Jack Nicklaus golf course, wonderful homes, and they've got a wave pool for the kids. What could be better? I know that envy is usually more trouble than it's worth, but I find myself envying the people who have found a way to live in what might be the nicest resort and vacation community east of the Mississippi. The peninsula on the Indian River Bay in Millsboro, Delaware, is simply stunning from its glorious homes, its incredible golf, and a list of amenities that sets the gold standard. The people who live here have created their own luck for sure, but everyone that I spoke to told me they feel lucky to call this place home. We go through the gates here our blood pressure just goes down and it's just paradise and it's not only the physical beauty of the place that's one thing it's the unintended consequence of friendship and community and the people that we've met that you can't put a price on and that's so much beyond just looking at something and buying a home it's just everyone here has been just so great Diane and her husband Nick echo what so many Peninsula residents told us, that coming home to the Peninsula lifestyle gives them a palpable emotional response. It's almost magical. When you drive through the gates, it's, it's like a, a weight just falls off your shoulder and it's like, ah, I'm here. Jim Latanzi is lucky enough to live and work at the Peninsula. He's the director of sales. I asked Jim why the Peninsula and why now? Why the Peninsula is obvious. It's the people. People make the difference. Um, why also is our proximity to locations. We've got uh, just a short trip away, the Annapolis, the DC, the Philadelphia, New York, New Jersey areas for visits. Um, as far as why now, with interest the way, uh, rates the way they are today, as low as they've been, record lows, and prices for uh, everybody to fit everybody's budget, uh, Peninsula is definitely the place to be. There is so much fun to be had at the Peninsula, it can be easy to overlook that this is a place where people live. They build their dream homes. There are several great builders here, and they have adjusted to the economy by offering homes in many price ranges. And after the worst housing downturn since the Depression, sales have been very brisk lately at the Peninsula. This is the best time to buy at the Peninsula. Um, things have changed. We've all gone through a what we call a, 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 a down market. We think we've answered that with uh, the addition of NV Homes, with the addition of Miller Smith and our custom builders, uh, Resort Point, Atlantic Homes, Echelon, and Shell Brothers. They've all designed new product to fit the peninsula. If you are a golfer, this is about the best place in America to live, period. Most home sites are built right on a championship golf course designed by Jack Nicklaus. Look at this course, holes right on the water, simply awesome. The Peninsula's golf and other amenities are managed by the name in club management around the world, Troon. When you come to a Troon golf facility, we provide unparalleled service, championship playing conditions, and amenities that are second to none. And people have come to know that as they travel around the world and see other Troon golf properties. And we are and have established ourselves to be the premier golf management company in the world. I asked Donald to list the amenities here and it took him over two minutes to answer the question. Well, I don't have time for that, but aside from the three pools, including an incredible wave pool, stunning outdoor pool, and awesome indoor pool, there's world-class tennis, a fitness center that you won't believe, walking trails, private beaches, all kinds of kid activities, on and on. What a place. What you don't see at the peninsula is also very important to residents' bottom line. Listen to this. The other thing that, that we really enjoy is the tax difference 
the property tax difference between here and what we're used to in New Jersey. It is, uh, uh, I mean, my, my property taxes in New Jersey at this point are 12,000 a year. Our property taxes here are $614 a year. Um, there's no sales tax in Delaware. Who wouldn't like to have an extra thousand dollars a month to spend on things other than property taxes? You gotta love Delaware. I could go on and on about the peninsula for an hour, but the bottom line for me here is its people. I met so many great peninsula residents in the day that I was here looking around. The peninsula is a wonderful resort. Every time everyone here drives through the gates, they feel like they're on vacation. So for people who are interested in feeling like they're on vacation, on weekends, if they want to retire here, I would suggest they come take a look at the place and get a sense of what it's like. The peninsula on Bay Farm Road in Millsboro, Delaware, surrounded by water, golf, and great people. And yes, envy is usually a waste of time, but I can't help it. Life at the peninsula is worthy of envy. It's a really great way to travel, to take a break from the ordinary, to put all your troubles behind and take a nice relaxing trip across the bay. Well, that's it for this edition of Twin Capes Television from the Cape May Lewis Ferry aboard the Twin Capes. I want to thank Mike Porch and the great team here at the ferry. I'll tell you, what makes this ferry even more special is the people who work to make it run so smoothly every single day. A great team. Have a great day. Thanks for joining us. Enjoy your next trip on the ferry. I'm Rich Noonan. We'll see you next time.